the house and I'm going to show you how to do a stretcher bar. Stretch a canvas. These are the Fredericks stretcher bars. They're very inexpensive. They come pre-cut and you just slide them together. Before I do that, you probably won't be able to see it, but uh, the Fredericks brand and well many of them, they don't clean them up when they cut them and it's little bits of wood and they'll you have to clean that off because if it falls down on the surface where you're going to be laying your canvas, that can scratch the surface of your canvas. I found that out the hard way. So you just slide them together. And they slide together rather snugly. So they stay together. Many people put a staple here and here. But other people say no. And here's why. They're designed with some slots back here. And if you have your canvas stretched over this and it gets um, loose after months or years due to humidity changes and things like that, and you want to stretch it out, these are designed so you can pound a piece of a wedge of wood in here and it'll stretch the bars out to tighten up the canvas. Another way would be to spray some water on the back of the canvas and let that stretch it out. But uh, if you have staples here and here, or nails or glue, you can't stretch it out. So that is why I don't use um, nails or staples in my stretcher bars. Here's one I've already put together from uh, Utrecht. Um, two reasons why I kind of prefer Utrecht is when they cut them, they're clean. I never have to clean them. The bits of wood are all gone. And they slide together just the same as the Fredericks. The difference is there's uh, a ridge here and a ridge here. The ridge on the Utrex is deeper, so when the canvas is on it and it, there's a little movement, it never touches the bottom part of the wood. The ridge here isn't very high on other stretcher bars and it will sometimes touch this. And I've noticed sometimes you can see this line on the canvas after a while and you just don't want that. So the Utrex stretcher bars cost 10 or 15 or 20 cents more per side, I'd rather just pay that 15 cents and get the stretcher bars that I prefer. I'm going to be using stretcher bar uh, pliers. You don't have to use those. You can just use regular canvas pliers. They just don't bite as much. You know, so you have a, a wider bite on the canvas here. They also have a little thing here for leverage, but that's, that's not absolutely necessary by any means. Sometimes I do just use regular pliers. So I will um, take my canvas and lay it on the table, making sure none of those little bits of wood from the stretcher bars are on the towel that I put down here on this wobbly table. And I'll lay my uh, stretcher bars over. And this particular print, there's a little bit of overlap on each side. I probably can't see it in the camera, but that's the way this one is designed. So you get it lined up, and I'm using an electric stapler. And I'll just staple some staples in. This stapler, I bought it like Home Depot or Lowe's, I think it cost about $30. There are some that are silver that are not electric and you just manually press the handle and they go down. Um, I don't know what they cost, probably 10 or $15, but I prefer the electric one. Of course, you could use pneumatic ones, you know, air-powered ones. So I stapled the one side, now I'll go to the opposite and just pull it kind of taut and staple it down in a couple places. This is a small frame, it's only 16 by 16, so I'm just putting some staples about uh, two inches apart or so. Now I go to the third side, staple it down. Now I'll go to the fourth side. And I can either just uh, pull it tight like I'm doing, or I'll use the, the pliers, although you may not have to use these pliers. I pull a little bit tight, staple it down. Move over a little bit tight, staple it down. 
Now I didn't get all that close to the edges because it makes it easier to fold the edges if you don't uh, staple right up to the edges first. On the corners, well here, see it's not tight like a drum, but it's tight enough. It's not good if there comes, there's allowance for shrinkage and expansion here. Um, so that was easy. Didn't take long at all. Now the corners, I've seen people do it various ways. They pinch them off and fold this over and you just have to pick one that works for you. I'm just going to lay this down, and fold this one over this way and this one over that way. And put a staple in there. And the edges are fairly clean. Not perfect. There's better ways of doing that. You can just practice on your own and uh, see which one you like. Some people, I'll just take a pair of scissors here, they'll actually cut some of this out. So there's less to work with here. They'll get a cleaner fold if they do that. I've seen people do it that way. I'm not experienced in doing that. Maybe I should try and get a cleaner fold. And you put a staple in here. And I've seen people, uh, you know, you just cut straight down in. And they will fold over that way. And then and they'll cut this excess off. Fold it that way. Not that pretty, but it's on the back side. And we'll do one last corner. I'll just press it down in. Fold this over, fold this over. There it is. Press it down. Now you can see on the sides, the print has overlapped some on all four sides. This is called a museum wrap. Now you can just put that in a frame or some people will paint the sides here. They could paint this for this one, maybe dark green or something. Uh, you can buy a little bottle of acrylic paint for a dollar or less. Paint the sides. If you don't like that color, buy another bottle of paint for less than a dollar and paint that up. Um, as you can see, it didn't take me long to do this. I actually showed you the wrong way to do it, but it actually comes out really nice. You can kind of get away from doing it the true correct way on these smaller frames. On bigger frames you probably want to do it right. And what's the right way? Well, you would put one, like one staple here, then one here, then one here, then one here, you know, pulling in tight as you do it. And then you would put a, a staple or two here, and then a staple or two here, and there's, you kind of go out in sort of a circular fashion all the way around. It's on a bigger frame that might be really important. And also on a bigger frame, like uh, when you do like a three or four foot long frame, uh, you might have to put a bar across the center, which you can buy at the art store, as support so it doesn't bow in. Anyway, that's a stretched frame. You can hang it up just like that, or put it in a picture frame. Uh, I hope you learned something here. Again, here's those websites. Um, if you have any questions, just email me. Go to craigpearson.com and email me, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Try these other websites out for more information as well. Have fun painting. Have fun stretching your own canvas.